hope you all get to enjoy this childhood dream of mine, and I hope that you find this as fun and as exciting as I do. We're just going to sit back, kick back. We're going to have a conversation with an individual up here, and I think a lot of you know who he is. I am so fired up, I can't even tell you. I was just backstage chatting with this man, and um, I know I tried to do my best uh, impersonation yesterday. Shh. I know I tried to do my best impersonation yesterday, and I feel like I could only do justice by bringing the real deal to you guys. I want you guys to show some love to the one, the only, Vanilla Ice! Hello, man. All right. Hello, hello everybody. Good to see you. We got Stay some here. comfy chairs over here, yeah. Right. Um, okay, so we're gonna start off, I just got a couple of questions that uh, we're gonna ask Vanilla Ice. Um, so, uh, this is exciting. Hey, by the way, guys, how many of y'all know I, I don't get nervous, eh? I don't. <laughs> it's vanilla ice, man. <laughs> mom, 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 come on, look at, look at. It's vanilla ice. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's my mom. She knew I did. Say, mom, That's word mom. to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not a lot of people can say vanilla ice said word to their mother. Man, I am so fired up. Hey, um, first question I have for you, and you want me to call you Robert Ice? Rob, Rob, Rob is good. I respond either way. Okay, awesome. Rob, <laughs> <laughs> now, we're on a first name basis, me and Rob up in here now. We go way back. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> Rob, uh, first question for you, because uh, you've obviously had uber success, I mean, beyond anyone's probably wildest dreams. Who were you as a child growing up? Who, who was Robert Van Winkle growing up? I was full of energy, you know. I was the kid that ran around and just loved the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> nice. Best thing 1984 did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's kind of, that's, that's my upbringing, you know, just... Running around, acting like a superhero, and enjoying life, full of energy, racing dirt bikes, coming up, you know. Uh, at 14 years old, I this breakdance movement came out. Uh, you guys might remember, you know, I think we're all like around 29 in here. So, you know, <laughs> don't laugh too hard. But uh, back in the day, uh, breakdancing, remember the movies like Turbo and Ozone and Beat Street? Uh, so I would mimic those movies, I mean, at home, you know, and we started our own little breakdance crew. So 14 years old, I would take some cardboard to the mall with a big jam box, spin on my head, make 40 bucks a day, chase the girls around, eat some pizza, see a movie and have some change left over at the end of the day. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's why you like the Ninja Turtles so much, too. That's why I like the Ninja Turtles so much. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Hey, um, next question. Who were your role models uh, growing up in your rap career, and who are your role models today? I mean, you know, role models are anybody that was hot on the charts at the time or anything like that. I have a lot of great acts that, uh, that you know, that influenced me, um, like Roger Trapman, Zap, Parliament, Funkadelic, the whole yeah. funk movement. Right. I was more moved by that than the rock and roll at the time because it was just a sign of the times, you know, and... Um, and it, 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 it inspired me to, but I always loved poetry. Even my mom was like, this is a little strange. My kid writes poetry. I used to write poetry for my mom and poetry. So all music, no matter what type it is, it's all poetry. So yeah. um, when it became time for me to do the poetry, it had to come out in rap music because that's what I was influenced by. Right. And um, my mom says, white boys don't rap. <laughs> I said, well, I do, Mom, I do. And, she's, and six months later, I bought her a house, a piano, and wow. a brand new car. <laughs> Amazing. So, I don't know if most people know this, but you wrote the rap song when you were 16 years old. Yeah. When did it become mainstream, and when did you know that you were onto something? Because you, you didn't really set out to have this super success, really. Well, no one could. I mean, the, the most sold record before mine came along was, like, Run DMC, Beastie Boys, and they were like gold, which was big for rap music. Gold is 500,000. Uh, once I was 19, my record started, uh, I signed with uh, Itchy, uh, I was first on with Itchy Bond Records, which was Curtis Mayfield's, and we sold like 48,000 copies. I signed with EMI, Mr. Charles Koppelman out of New York City, and, um, and went on to sell 163 million records. And, it, and that is all from doing 
the Ninja Turtles, Ice Ice Baby, play that funky music in a record called To the Extreme yep. that I originally wrote when I was 16 years old. Wow, that's <laughs> incredible. So, much like uh, you went through some controversy um, back in, uh, you know, back one minute, vanilla ice is everywhere. I mean, you were in the Middle East, you were in China, <laughs> you were in everywhere. Like there wasn't a place that people weren't, you know, bopping to your music. What, what happened do you feel that caused some of the, the I mean, I mean guess, I guess it's a lot of negativity. I mean, obviously the Arsenio Hall garbage that happened and that stuff. And, well, there's and, a lot of everything, you know. You can add a lot of different things to it. But uh, truth is, is when you do music and you're on top, you have nowhere to go but down. So what, the way I look at it is it's like when I was 16, you know, to 19 to, to 25, the, the snow globe gets shaken up, you know, and it has to settle at some point. Right. And most people self-destruct. And, uh, you know, they go through the 27 phase, which we all kind of were familiar with, you know. It's tough being a celebrity and, and figuring out how you fit into a normal life because you think that the illusion of, of the life you're living is real, and it's really not. It's artificial. And what's real is your family, your kids, and coming home at the end of the day, that's real. And I have to tell my kids that. Everything else out there is just artificial, you know? Right. What you see is me at home, you know, doing the same thing that everybody does. Yeah. Uh, the only difference is, is um, we all wake up the same way, you know? But it's, it's what you do during the day that makes the difference. Wow. Um, what, yeah, please. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna ask is I'd like if if two people um, the one rule is you have to be a ridiculous Vanilla Ice fan to ask a question uh, <laughs> like I'm talking like me okay and, I love the hairdo by the way it's just perfect thanks man <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it it's perfect there <laughs> you still got all of it up here I have my lines right you know, I, I should have went back to the 90s yeah. If anyone has any questions, I'd like to have two people come up, and, uh, and as I'm asking this question, if you want to come on up and uh, feel free to ask, uh, you know, the Iceman uh, 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 any question that you might have, awesome. Um, actually, you know what? You go, you go first. Hey, hey, there's a microphone. Um, the, oh, yeah, oh, right there. There's a microphone right there. Yes, yes. My name is Thais. Thank you so much, Leanne and uh, Jamie, for throwing this event. Um, I have a question for the... Uh, for Rob, <laughs> is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so I really like your show, The Vanilla Ice Project. Thank you. Thank I'm you. a real estate investor myself. Yep. I was just wondering, um, do you have any mentors at all who are your uh, real estate investor mentors? Uh, yes, I do. Um, you know, I have a lot of them. Uh, you know, Trump, and I'm not a supporter, by the way, but as uh, before, you know, the presidency, the guy was in real estate and did really good. He's, you know... He's known for that. Uh, there's, a, there's quite a few around Palm Beach where I live. But, you know, I, I, uh, I read a lot of books. Robert Sheeman was a book that I read, an author that uh, helped me out a lot. And um, I took all those Carlton Sheets courses back in the day. And I really didn't learn much from them. But after a while, you just pick the things apart. And then you figure your way out through the maze. Because, you know, if you believe it, you can achieve it. It's a true story, and, and, and I don't think that anybody's really born with a talent. I think it develops over time by your interest. So I was really interested in, you know, how this all worked, and um, when I got into real estate, I never, I actually thought I was losing money because I spent money, like millions and millions on houses. I had a, a house in L.A. next door to Michael J. Fox. I had a house oh. in Dallas. I liked to snowboard, uh, snowboard Utah. I had a, a place there, Dallas, Miami. Never saw one of them once. And this is how I got into real estate. And uh, I came back from tour three years later, and I go, wow, I never even saw these houses. I never even slept one night in it. And I never rented them out, so they would just cost me money. So I thought that it was young and dumb, and, and I blew a bunch of money. So I said, let's sell them all. And I literally made millions. I didn't even change the carpet or the paint. I mean, I just sold them a few years later and it, it just made millions. And I'm like, ha, let's go buy some more, you know? <laughs> let's go buy some more, yeehaw. 
So um, I did that and I started just flipping homes and then I worked my way up from the smaller ones to the bigger ones and uh, what you see on TV is 26 years of experience. I have a GC license, 18 years ago I went to uh, design school and I got a degree. So I haven't stopped, I love it, I found a passion. So that's, that's kind of how the talent became uh, a talent because it was uh, an interest of mine. Awesome. I have a mentor. Um, I actually have three mentors, and one of them is Stefan Arniel. I'd like to offer you one of his books, yeah. uh, Money People Deal. I love it. Awesome. Thank you very much. I have... Um, very nice of you. Nice thanks, you. T.S. I got one, uh, another question before someone else, uh, just real quick. I just got one question here. Um, one of the coolest things that I learned about you uh, was that the people that sued you... <laughs> I, not that I can relate to this at all, <laughs> but the people that sued you, you ultimately ended up buying part of it or something like that, and now yeah. you're actually getting checks. Well, it's funny how publishing works. I was really young, so I didn't know much about publishing, and at the time of my lawsuit, I remember hearing about Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney going through this feud because they had made a song called Ebony and Ivory. You remember that, right? No. Ebony and yeah. Ivory come together. Okay, so um, <laughs> we can go there. But uh, yeah, so I, they were like, I was like, well, how can Michael Jackson take the publishing from Paul McCartney? He wrote it. He is the Beatles. What's, what's that all about? Yeah. And they go, no, uh, once you sell your, you know, once you sell your original recordings to the record company, they own it. That's called the publishing. Yeah. So they can license it out and do what they want. I said, hmm. So Michael Jackson had more money than Paul McCartney, so he won that uh, bid, and he owns the Beatles. So every time a Beatle, get, a Beatle record gets sold, it's Michael Jackson that gets paid. Wow. And I was like, wow. <clears throat> so you can do that, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then a lawsuit came with uh, David Bowie and Queen. Yep. And um, it went on for a little while. It was pretty short. We never went to trial or anything like that. Uh, uh, it was a weird publishing deal because uh, Freddie Mercury owned a piece of it, Brian May owned a piece of it, and David Bowie owned a piece of it. And since two of them were gone, <clears throat> uh, it depends on who they left their publishing to that, that we have to deal with. Uh, Brian May really didn't get much off of his points because he was only getting a small proportion. Yeah. So I offered him $4 million and, it, and it came out to, uh, I own it now, and uh, so when it gets played, I get paid. <laughs> right. Nice. That's so awesome. I learned about publishing in that way, and it's a lot better than the lawsuit. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, next question over here. Hi. Hi. So, <clears throat> more of a request for Jamie. Um, we wear these big rings, and I remember going through a picture that you had with the wide open. And before you go, can we get a picture with you and Jamie in front of the camera with wide open? Because there's Absolutely. something we want to present to them, okay? Okay, you got awesome. it. Thank you. Amazing. That's Absolutely. a great request right there. What a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're, we're, we consider ourselves to be true industry disruptors. Um, there hasn't been a company in the financial services space in Canada that's grown as fast as we have. Um, and we believe it's a lot to do with our leadership and our up and coming stars. And you had uber, uber success. And every time I've watched you in an interview, especially as of late and as you've gotten older, um, you just have a humbleness about you. How did you stay so grounded, yet became this intergalactic superstar, yet you still have this demeanor that you're just related? As soon as I walk behind the stage, you started chatting, it's like just comfort with you. How, how, did, how did you? I love people. I love to talk. I'll talk your ear off if you let me. I'm the guy that'll sit on the airplane with a Starbucks coffee, <laughs> annoy the person next to me, and just tell them my life story from one city to the next. I love talking. I went out and built homes with the Amish, and I lived with them for three months at a time. And I never, um, <clears throat> I never had a cell phone or electricity, so we, we talked, and we told great jokes, and I right. loved it, and I didn't miss it at all. You think you are, but you really won't miss it when it's out of sight and out of mind. But, um, yeah, you know, I like to talk. I like people. I like um, interacting, and I, I, I lived in L.A., too, and I saw a lot of the celebrities out there. And like I was telling you earlier, there's just a lot of artificialness to that whole thing right. that, um, you know, I'm just a working man. I like to get up in early in the morning and go to work. I do construction, and, and, and of course, I, I sing and I dance, and on the weekends, I still act like a teenager. <laughs> and I'm the oldest teenager in here, and I love it. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with it. I, I, I want to live in the 90s forever. I, I miss the 90s, honestly. That's awesome. 
great decade. I mean, we got our movies at Blockbuster, right? <laughs> it was so much better than, than all this stuff we have today. I spent an hour looking for a movie and I just couldn't decide. It was a journey. Oh my gosh, I just I wanted to go get out of the house and go get the popcorn and look at the back of the DVDs and it's just not yeah. gonna happen anymore. Amazing. You've had, um, you've had some of your team, uh, I know I've been speaking with Chuck and Tom, mm -hmm. and they've been with you, and some of your guys on the Vanilla Ice Project, they've been working with you for 25 years. That's, that's just a testament to your leadership and working with people and stuff like that. What are some of your keys to that? What is the key to success in having that longevity with these folks? Absolutely. Well, my mom taught me that loyalty was, was everything, you know, number one. And, uh, you know, always keep good, real friends. They keep you grounded, you know. And that is what, what really keeps people grounded. They keep you real, you know. And your family, your friends. I've got three kids, three girls, <laughs> and a one-year-old at home. I just, I got a new one. And uh, that keeps you grounded, you know. Thank you. Um, you know, I read a book called The Platinum Rule, and uh, it tells you that there's four types of people uh, on the planet. This is for business-wise. And uh, it tells you that there's thinkers, there's relators, there's socializers, and there's directors. And um, when you learn how to judge character in each person, you learn how to build a team. Because I don't care what you're doing, you're really not going to ever do it alone. You don't understand what I'm saying? Yep. And uh, you have to build a team. So certain people that are loud and like Wes Kane on the TV show with me, he's loud. He's the guy to walk in the room and he's a socializer. He's yeah. great. When it's time to get attention and, you know, get sales or whatever, that's, that's your guy to get yeah. loud. Um, he's not good at a cubicle job. He would not sit very well. Uh, but I have a girl named Angela who is, and she could never, she sits in the back of the room, she's quiet, and I know how to place her because she's the thinker, and yeah. she loves organizing and, and doing the computer and the pay, and she could sit back there and do that, but she doesn't like crowds. She doesn't walk in the room and go, hey, I'm yeah. Wes Kane, I'm in the room. You know, she, so I, I, this book helped me strategically place people uh, to where they enjoy what they're doing, yeah. not just doing it for a paycheck. And I take them on vacations, I give them lunch every day, I just, you know, you treat them, and they don't even, we don't have a punch, we don't have to punch a clock. They yeah. challenge each other on who can get there the earliest. Wow. And everybody is good friends and we, we get along, so it helps when you got a good team that's happy. Yeah. Let me tell you, happiness and smiles are contagious. Yeah, awesome. What? Yeah, go ahead. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we said it back in the 90s. I used to say S-U-P. S-U-P, yeah. sup. 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 You gotta be, and you cross your arms with the old 90s look and you go. No, no, I can't do that. Sup. <laughs> sup. So. I used to think I was real cool back in the yeah. day. I had Z Cavricci pants. <laughs> Tearaways. Oh, man. Uh, I have a question for you. You obviously had great success in music and in um, being an entrepreneur in real estate. So I don't know what your net worth is and you don't have to tell me, but I'm sure it's in the millions. What keeps someone going? Like just to go to the next level. It's, it's, it's never the money. The money's only the reward, yeah. you know? It's like the trophy that collects dust up on the, uh, the shelf, you know? It's just a memory of whatever you did to get it. But um, what keeps me going is, um, you know, accomplishment. Once you accomplish one thing, you, what are you doing? You're standing there wasting time. Get, get to the next thing, right. right? So I was always, you know, with a, a great mind frame and programming of uh, if there's a problem, yo, I'll solve it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. And I iron every wrinkle out and I try to keep going. But, you know, that's the way life goes. You know, we all have to face adversities. Awesome. Um, I wanted, I, I really wanted to ask you a lot of questions about Tupac and stuff because I know that yeah. you hung with him and Suge Knight and some different dealings. Ask me Could, whatever you want. And, and it doesn't really relate to business, so this is pure entertainment, folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was, uh, we're getting some nuggets over here, but I, I really, I just want to know. I was a major fan of Tupac. Um, you know, I still remember exactly where I was on a bus when I opened up the paper and read the bad news. Um, what was he like? Tupac was a great poet which is why I love poetry, you know? Um, you gotta admire, um, you know, how he could actually um, paint the picture through poetry. Yeah. It's amazing, you know, it's a talent, but it's also, it's a talent and art 
but it's also a vision that that he could he could relate. You know, it's a when you're listening to the music, you don't need a photo album. It 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 comes to you. It either translates and comes to you, or you just kind of don't listen to it and move on. Right? It doesn't really touch you. Yeah. Certain songs touch people because they they'll remember it forever in any kind of way, whether it. You're doing the running man <laughs> or cutting your zigzags in your hair or shave your eyebrow. Um, you know, it's all part of what influenced you coming up and how it touched you in a way that you can remember without a f- photo album. Yeah. So, it, it, for instance, if you play Tupac, I'm sure you can remember where you were at at the time. If you play Ice Ice Baby, you remember who you were dating in high school. Yeah. You probably tried to do the running man for the first time or shaved your eyebrow and your mom got mad at you. I did. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, we're part of the generation that, you yeah. know, we invented the computers, yeah. but we didn't grow up with them. That's right. So we're the last of the great generation, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. We really are. Awesome. Another question over here. Jack. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Good, thank you. In 1983, you were dancing with three guys. I just, and, and I want to know who those guys were on the, on the um, team that you were dancing with. I'm a part of Rocksteady, New York City Breakers. Okay. So I remember back in the yeah. days, and uh, That's right. I just happened to be here. So That's I just right. thought, you know, I want to know who the three guys that you were dancing with in 83 on the ice. On the still ice. Still friends with them, man. They're great friends of mine still today, and they've gone on to be very successful. Uh, High Tech is one of them, my man Jay Huffman, yep. yeah. yeah, I've got uh, E-Rock, I've got Twist, I've got, and I'm still good friends with Coco, he's, he's friends with the family and everything, man, so two of them stay in, in constant touch with me throughout the years, and we still get together, and, and we can still dance, yes, not, not as long, it still hurts a little more hey, in just, the morning, but, but we can still do the moves. <laughs> well, I was just, we just did a video, I was doing some stuff with, not too, a couple of years ago with Shabadoo. Yeah. So yeah, I know I was, all the b boys. So man. hopefully, you rock, me and Wiggles and Rock, me Wiggles and Crazy Legs, about breaking here in 1984. I remember, bro, that you were in that. <laughs> yeah, man. I know you. That's my party. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and we'll talk on. later on, man. That's what's up, bro. Give me love. <laughs> bro, good to see you, my man. That's b boy love right there. I know, we all know everybody from around the way, man. I tell you. Right on, man. Hey, that means when you start rapping up here, he's going to come up and dance and do some moves over here. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get the rust off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Another question over here. Hey, Rob. Uh, Hi. Thanks for being here for this whole uh, company. Uh, I think a lot of people go through struggles. Uh, when you're at your lowest point and things were the toughest on you, how did you pull yourself up? What did you do? What things did you do? Uh, how did you uh, do your daily activities uh, for someone that's down right now and have a tough time? Yeah. Uh, what could you recommend to them that work for you? We all get down throughout life. We all have tough times. Sometimes things don't iron out the way we all planned. But you're really never, ever a failure <clears throat> unless you refuse to get up. Hmm. Yep. So, you know, it makes you stronger. We all, you know, every, every negative that's ever happened in your life is a positive because you remember it and you know not to go down that road again and you know that, you know, you're a little bit wiser now. You're a little bit smarter. And it, it helps you kind of guide yourself and advise others. That's awesome. You, um, you did go down a dark path yourself for a number of years and now you are uber happy. I mean, you're just a, just a fun loving guy. Thank you. How did you get out of that? How did you beat that well, fun? Well, I had a weekend that lasted about three years. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So like I said, you know, it's like that snow globe, it's shaken up. So I kind of had to wait for it to settle. Um, like with the career and everything and the Ninja Turtles and all this stuff, you know, you ride this wave and the wave, you're up on this wave and you're like, yeah, you know, you're surfing, but you don't really think, oh, is this going to ever end? You're thinking that you're in the moment, right? Like right. you're just living it right now. But sooner or later, that wave is going to hit the shore and crash. Yep. And instead of sitting there on the shore getting a sunburn, swim back out and catch another wave. Yeah. And that's what I do. Right you know, yeah. swim back out and catch another wave, man. Awesome. 
So you, um, you had this ridiculous success, and at the top of your game, if you could have went back in time to be the 23, 22-year-old Vanilla Ice, <laughs> I'm sitting with Vanilla I'd give ice. myself a lot of advice. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that was my question, actually. What, what advice would you give Vanilla Ice from Robert Van Winkle today to the 22, 23-year-old Vanilla Ice having all the success in his life? I'd say slow down, and I'd say... Stop and smell the roses every chance you get. We're here for a short time. Make it a good time. And, you know, enjoy the ride. Don't take anything too serious. Because, you know, we all get caught up in these little things that we end up taking too serious. Uh, I don't do politics. I, I, I don't do any of that stuff. So I just, you know, I enjoy my family, my friends, and, and riding dirt bikes, getting muddy. We were going through mud holes just the other day, you know. Mm. It's, it's just part of being fun and happy and living life. And, if, and, and like I said, smiles are contagious. So once you start, you know, generating smiles and happiness, you'll find that you surround yourself with people yeah. like that too that can give it back to you. Awesome. Do you, do you have a favorite book? Out of curiosity. One of my favorite books is The Platinum Rule for, okay. you know, it helps you with a lot of things like that. I, I'm funny because I read a lot of self-help books and different things like that. I'm the guy to go in borders and sit there for hours and just coffee and, and reading books and seeing if I can learn anything. I yeah. just find it fun, you know. Favorite author? Say it again. Do you have a favorite author? Uh, Robert Sheeman. Yeah. I mentioned earlier, he's great. You know, there's some great ones out there, but, uh, you know, it depends on what topic we're talking about. Like real estate, like I can talk your ear off about that. Yeah. I'm... I'm so into real estate, I can, yeah, bore you with it. But, uh, you know, it depends on the topic. Yeah. I like talking about music because I've been talking so much real estate lately. It's, yeah, yeah. it's kind of refreshing. <laughs> That's awesome. So then, so back to the music then. So right now, today, uh, who do you think is one of the greatest uh, rap artists of all time? I think it's an opinion. I don't think it's any... Um, What's any, your opinion? My opinion, the greatest? I don't, I don't think there's a greatest. No. I don't. It depends on the mood, the time, yeah. it shifts, you know? We could all say Big E, Tupac, you can say Jay-Z, you can say these big names. Yeah. But it wouldn't, they, none of them influenced me. No. My, I think Roger Troutman was the greatest influence on me, and most people don't even know who that is here. Right. He's not with us anymore. He's, um, he was the guy who did the song, uh, California Love, yeah. you know? Or Computer Love, okay, well, I'm not singing, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Anyway, he's, he was a great influence. He was my first concert I ever went to. Right on. Yeah, awesome. it's amazing. One more question, and I think it'd be really sick to see you rock this out. You know who Roger Troutman is? What's that? You know who Roger Troutman from Zap? I know the name. I, I, Everybody's I, getting on Pandora. We're going to find out <laughs> who they are. Oh, I know that song. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question, um, you know, when, like, Center of attention, you know, all the lights and everything. Everybody's like, you know, focused on you and everything like that. How do how do you keep humble in the moment? Because I mean, it's it's very easy to kind of get caught up in the moment. Like, how do you stay humble? Humble, like I said, my family keeps me grounded. You know, uh, all my friends around me, they they have no problem telling me, you know, the way it is or whatever. There's nobody kissing ass around me, you know? It's fun, and I love, I love life and my friends that, uh, that they keep me grounded. So that's kind of what it is, you know? You got to have good people around you, man. You know? I used to, when I was younger, um, I used to have these parties at my house and stuff, you know? And a lot of celebrities and models come by and stuff. And I really didn't know many people, you know? It's my house, I guess, you know, whatever. But uh, I'd look around, and I was like, you know, this is my party. I, don't, I only know, like, three people here, and there's, like, 300. Yeah. You know, they break a $5,000 vase. Oh, sorry, where's the beer? <laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. just like, I came to a, a grips that, you know, it was, it was really artificial. Yeah. And I just didn't want to be a part of it. So um, I went back to racing dirt bikes and hanging out with my mechanic friends. And yeah. I, I got framers, drywallers, and plumbers as friends, you know. And, and they just, they're honest working guys. And that's, that's what keeps you grounded. That's awesome. Yeah. Right on. Well, I... I have, to, I have to say one more thing. My best friend, uh, Daryl Tonk, his wife, Cecilia, they, they said that I had to get you to say hi to them if it's humanly possible. Uh, they're not here, but... Uh, Cecilia, oh, you want to do a camera? You want to do a video? Or just, uh, just say hi. Okay, so Cecilia? Cecilia and Daryl Tonk. Cecilia and Daryl just want to say what's up.
Word to your mother, too. <laughs> awesome, man. Sup. <laughs> awesome, man. What's up? <laughs> Brother, I appreciate you so much, man. My pleasure. And we're looking forward to this Thank performance, you, man. Yes, awesome. sir. Yeah. Vanilla Ice. Hey.